Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dougal, the Nootropic Reviewer, and during this video, you're going to learn about my five favorite nootropic supplements to better handle ADHD-like symptoms. I used to actually be on Concerta, I was also on Ritalin, though thanks to these nootropic supplements, I can get off meds and I can take some safer alternatives which will allow me to maintain the same level of concentration so I can be productive. The very first nootropic, and this may surprise you, is Paracetam, and the reason it may surprise you is because it's subtle, however, it works, and I do feel like it's somewhat safe to take long-term. I've actually been using using Prastam over eight years now. I take it every single day. Um, I cycle off but very minimally. With Prastam, you are more motivated. Your goals are always top of mind. It's a lot easier to wake up with a little bit more ambition, a little bit more energy. But I think the mistake people make with Prastam is they really expect miracles from it. Listen, you can't compare Prastam to the ADHD meds. The ADHD meds, for example, take Concerta or Adderall. You take them once you feel energetic, you feel stimulated, you feel too alert. But then again, they have those negative side effects. With Prastam, provided that you have like objective ways of measuring your performance, you will see results and you'll find that during the workday, it's just easier to have that tunnel vision focus that you need. The way one would want to start using Prostam is by taking one gram twice a day and following that practice. It doesn't matter when during the day you take it. Also, it doesn't matter if you take it in a fasted state or a fed state, but I would recommend that you go ahead with two servings a day and also using it along with a choline supplement such as alpha GPC, choline by tartrate or CDP choline. And some side effects that you should watch out for are headaches, a slightly worse mood, but a a lot of that can actually be offset by the use of choline supplementation. The second nootropic supplement is L-tyrosine. This is an amino acid that's found in egg whites. It's also found in chicken breast. However, when you take it in supplemental form and exclusive of additional amino acids, it's not competing in the bloodstream with other amino acids and you're able to get a strong boost of focus. What's different about L-tyrosine versus uh, paracetam, for instance, is that L-tyrosine is something you would want to use to have a heightened level of attention and concentration for about a couple of hours. That's how it works with most people with L-tyrosine. They're able to fight off stress. They're able to be far less distractible. Their motivation is higher because L-tyrosine works on the dopaminergic system. So as you ingest dopamine, you're basically boosting your dopamine levels and then you actually have that behavior to be more inclined to do activities that would result in you achieving your goals. Me as a real estate agent, when I use L-tyrosine, I can go ahead and make calls with no effort because I'm driven to take that action. And I look at L-tyrosine somewhat as an alternative to caffeine. With caffeine, you get more physical energy. With L-tyrosine, you get some mental energy, plus it doesn't keep you up at night. So for that reason, I think L-tyrosine is a great nootropic. I wouldn't personally use it every single day if it's for the sustained concentration benefit that you want, but a nice use of it is also taking a pre-workout. Pre-workout combined with caffeine can make you have better workouts, can make you burn fat in a more effective fashion, for instance. And the way one would want to ingest L-tyrosine is by taking a capsule of about 750 milligrams I think anywhere between 500 milligrams to one gram is good. I don't see any need to go above that. And taking that serving when you need to have a couple of hours of focus. And it's also very good for relieving stress. Let's say if you've just finished a lot of work, your brain feels kind of full, you want some mental clarity, you can ingest some L-tyrosine to really relieve stress as shown in this study over here. So you can get back to work with some energy, with some concentration. And the side effects you should look out for with L-tyrosine would be anxiety and headaches. I'm somebody that's guilty of that. For instance, when I use L-tyrosine, I feel a slight bit of anxiety but I feel driven enough that I can still get my work done with a little bit of anxiety and it's okay. But to really get the most out of L-tyrosine, you definitely want to take it either in a fasted state or you want to take it between your meals. I would say like wait about a couple of hours from your previous meal before you ingest L-tyrosine and then there's a better chance of you feeling something. And if you want to learn more about L-tyrosine, I've talked about it in this video right here. The third nootropic supplement and it's getting a little bit stronger here is a phenylprastam. This is not similar to prastam whatsoever. Phenylprastam, it can be seen as a nootropic that that you would use in those emergency situations when you just want to take one pill, you want to have heightened energy and heightened alertness throughout the whole course of the day. So I don't recommend anybody uses phenylprastam every single day. Uh, the most that I've taken is maybe three times a week. Now I'm using it either once or twice a week. It's physically energizing as well as mentally energizing. I would say it's probably one of the most comparable things to Adderall. It doesn't blunt your appetite as much, but all of those effects that you may be getting from Adderall, for example, to be able to sustain a certain level of focus for a prolonged period of time, you're actually able to achieve through phenylprastam. But something worth pointing out is that although it may make you more inclined to do specific tasks, I've also noticed at the same time that my willpower really isn't that high when it comes to reducing those distractible activities. For instance, social media, when I use phenylprastam, I am just more likely to want to scroll. So with phenylprastam, it's like I'm more likely to do those harder activities because I'm driven. But at the same time, it's like I'm as willing to give in to some of those temptations that I naturally wouldn't be doing. And it's so energizing that you can be very tempted to take 
if at all past time and then just not take any breaks during the day, but I don't recommend you do that. I recommend that you still hydrate. You still, of course, take care of your mental health and take those necessary breaks. And a typical serving size for phenylprastam would be 100 milligrams to 150 milligrams. I'm somebody that's very sensitive to nootropics, so I can get away with taking a little bit less. I take between 80 to 100 milligrams, and I prefer taking it right under the tongue. So uh, if you get in the powder form, that's what makes it great. Along with the milligram scale, you can just place that amount under your tongue, leave it there for about 30 seconds, and you'll really notice it working. But don't take it first thing in the morning. I would recommend that you wait at least 30 minutes. Better off waiting 60 minutes before you take something as stimulating as phenylprastam. And the most common side effect would be insomnia or it would keep you up. I actually find it stronger than modafinil that way. If I take phenylprastam, even in the morning, it will keep me up. And excessive heart rate is something to be mindful of as well. So if you're doing very strenuous exercise, then you would want to watch out for that. The fourth nootropic supplement for better handling ADHD symptoms would be alpha-GPC. This is a form of choline, choline being a very important nutrient for overall brain function. Things like thinking, planning, learning skills. Alpha-GPC has to be one of the most researched nootropics out there showing it could be beneficial. You can look at alpha-GPC kind of like refueling your batteries because as you're going about the day, what happens is as you're expending energy, you get tired, you get fatigued, you feel mentally fatigued, and then so you can ingest an alpha-GPC and it does act kind of like re-energizing you to go about whatever next task you have. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what it does with cognitive function. I, some people say that it really works well to improve their memory. For me, I personally found the best results with alpha GPC and verbal fluency. It's as if when I'm talking, sometimes I can just start a sentence and then it just naturally flows. But when I'm not taking alpha GPC, I can't do that as smoothly, just overall being articulate. And recent research on alpha GPC showed that the consumption of alpha GPC made it likely that you were more motivated, not during the day, but specifically in the evening, which is very interesting. So perhaps that's one of the reasons why a lot of people report getting more work done when they're using alpha GPC. It's just simply that they're putting more hours in. However, the dosage protocol that you would follow may not be the same as one of your peers would follow because people have different tolerances to alpha GPC. You really got to find your sweet spot with it. For me, there are some days when I consume 500, even 700 milligrams of alpha GPC. There are some days when I take less. So depending on how much work you're doing, you may be better off taking more. However, due to the recent talk and this recent study concluding that alpha GPC consumption over a long period of time could be associated with a higher likelihood of having strokes. I think everyone should be a little bit careful with it, know what you're ingesting, and consume garlic along with your alpha GPC. And I've talked more about that in this video right here. And the most common side effects with alpha GPC would be having a worse mood and also lightheadedness. Now, having a worse mood, that's one of the signs that maybe you're not responding well to alpha GPC, or maybe you're taking too little or too much of it. And if that's still not the case after trying different dosage protocols, then you can consider another form of choline like CDP choline or like choline by tartrate. And the fifth nootropic supplement for better handling ADHD-like symptoms is rhodiola rosea. Now, this is an adaptogen, meaning it's a herbal nootropic that's better going to assist you in handling stress and just better improving your relationship to stress because stress is not a bad thing. Stress is a good thing, provided that you have the mental fortitude to get past that stress. And there's so much great research around rhodiola rosea, not just around handling stress, also for cognition, also for long-term health, but especially for fighting fatigue. Rhodiola rosea has to be one of my favorite nootropic supplements for better handling fatigue, especially if you're feeling somewhat tired during the middle of the day, you can ingest some rhodiola rosea, you feel right back up. For a lot of people that aren't so sensitive to nootropics, they may not notice rhodiola rosea working or they actually need to take it for several days to start seeing the benefit. But I'm somebody that I ingest rhodiola rosea. If I take 300 to 500 milligrams, I can feel it instantly and I feel great. I've actually rated this nootropic 10 out of 10 in this video over here where I rated nootropics from a scale of one to 10 because it's pretty shocking that rhodiola rosea really doesn't have any side effects or doesn't have side effects for me anyway. Plus, you, you won't really find side effects even talked about in the literature out there. And the way one would want to use rhodiola rosea is by taking a 500 milligrams once a day. Then you can increase the dosage up to two times a day. I'm pretty comfortable taking rhodiola rosea every single day, surprisingly. And when I first started taking it, I didn't really think that I could get away with taking it every single day. I felt I would have built somewhat of a tolerance to it, but it hasn't been my experience anyway that I built any sort of tolerance to rhodiola rosea. As a matter of fact, I get the same benefit now as I did from day one. But the way that I'm ingesting it isn't in the morning. I'm actually taking it in the afternoon, once at 2 o'clock p.m. and then again at 6 o'clock p.m. because of its effects in fighting off fatigue. But if you're somebody that wakes up and you don't have a good level of concentration, then you could consider taking rhodiola rosea right then in the morning because you're going to get that boost of concentration there afterwards. And this conversation would not be complete without addressing caffeine. It's been my experience that caffeine, if you do take it in small amounts, it will increase your willpower, it will increase your concentration, but you have to be mindful of the fact that if you ingest caffeine, you will crash three to four hours afterwards. And it's at that time when you don't have a good level of concentration and you also just make really bad decisions. A lot of people, for instance, they feel brain fog or they binge eat, but the way that I strategically use
this caffeine is I use it prior to working out. That way I'm having a better workout because we know that better workouts will result in better concentration throughout the day. What nootropic have I not addressed in this video regarding ADHD? I would love to hear your opinion in the comment section below. And if you did get value from this video, consider subscribing and drop a like. And if you want to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so over on Patreon or you can send me a direct message on Instagram and be sure to visit our Discord server that's running 24 seven. We're answering questions in a time sensitive fashion. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and look forward to seeing you next time.